everybody and welcome to Cope with Hope. Today I have Luanne Sibic talking to me all the way from Philadelphia. We are bonded by a very deep, deep, deep bond of love because we're associated with Denise Lynn, the best kept secret of America. <laughs> <laughs> she taught us soul coaching and I think we have this very deep connection of souls, which is beyond lifetimes. So um, I just feel so much love and gratitude to her for sharing her life with all of you today. It's such an honor and privilege for me. So, you know, thank you, Luanne. My heart is full. <laughs> Mine too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hello, everybody. <laughs> So Luan, um, you are a feng shui expert, you're a soul coach educator, you're an astro cartographer, you, are, um, you have your own certification, the Inner Harmony Forest Therapy Certification, you believe in healing the earth and how much the earth heals us, you love flowers, you love trees, you love the stars, so tell me in all these years, if she's been teaching for 20 years, in all these years of teaching, what would you say are the five important lessons that you have learned on the way and that you share with others? Wow. Um, five, huh? So, um, so before I did what I'm doing now, which I love, right? Yeah. I love, my company's name is Inner Harmony. And it's really about helping people find that harmony within themselves because mm -hmm. we can't always change what's going on in the world in a, no. in, a, in, a, in a way we do, right? When we change ourselves, that ripples out and it affects those people next to us. And if they're affected, that ripples out. And yeah. we can change the world in that way. But what we really only have control of is what we have in here. Yes. And so... Um, inner harmony is all about all of those tools you can use to help you have that inner harmony. Yes. Now, before before I do what I'm doing now, I had 20 years where I worked in the corporate world. I was computer programmer, IT manager, the vice president of the IT department, and um, and I loved that because I loved creating things that would help. I worked for a major. Um, rehabilitation company that helped people recover from st stroke and head injuries and things like that. So I loved that we created computer programs that could help the nurses, the therapists, the doctors do yes. a more efficient and effective job of helping those people get better. And it used to be a not-for-profit and then it became a corporation for profit and it changed, the feeling changed and it was about money. And it was probably my first real um, experience of noticing that shift of when people are doing things for money versus when people are doing things from their heart. Yes. And, you know, you hear about it, but until you're in the midst of it, you don't, you don't get it. And I got it and I didn't like it. I didn't like that everything was about, we'll only do this therapy if we can make a profit from it. We'll, we'll eliminate the recreational therapy because insurance doesn't pay for it. Yes. And um, so that did not, that made me very unhappy. That did not bring me joy. <laughs> and it was at that time that I thought, you know what? I don't need to do this. I have been studying um, feng shui, space clearing, um, aromatherapy, um, oracle cards, all sorts of things like that um, as, a, as a hobby, as a side thing that I, I played with. And I thought, you know what? What the heck? I'm going to start my own business, and this is what I'm going to do. So... That's how inner harmony was created. And so first thing, that was a long introduction. But the first thing I would say that made a shift in my life was feng shui. And there's many different schools of feng shui. I studied Denise Lin's school of feng shui, which is called interior alignment. And we only have two rules. The first rule is if it feels good, it's good feng shui. And the second rule is if it feels bad, it's bad feng shui. I love it. It's very, it's, it's very client oriented. Yeah. It's very personal. It's not about, you know, rules that work for somebody else. And I'm not saying that the rules don't have a reason. Yeah. Um, but what it comes down to is that you want to make your space support the life you want. 
And sometimes we get we get blinders on, right? We're not really seeing. We're just we've set up our space based on maybe when we first moved into the place and what we put in places and what we were doing in life at that time and what our goals were then. And you know, I've lived, it's hard for me to believe I've lived here for 20 years now. And mm -hmm. Um, this spring I'm looking around and I'm going, you know, it's, it feels good, but it, it's not who I am in the future, right? Okay. It represented 20 years ago, me starting my business. Now my business is going to the next level. And so again, I need to take a look at it. It's not, it's not that a place might be unpleasant to look at. It's yes. just that it doesn't support who I am next. And so Feng Shui, looking at that space, looking at the things, the objects that you have around you, do they make you feel good or do they make your energy go down? And it's so much more important now that yes. people are working from home and they're they're basically in their home a whole lot more. Well, the energy of your home affects you. And so some of the most important things you can do is just boxing up the things that don't that represent a part of your past that you're no longer no longer doing moving forward right so let's say if if it's a mom and she has kids that were little wee kids but now they're grown kids off in college packing up some of the little wee kid pictures put them in albums um and honor the, the young adults that you have now right the, the life moving forward honor what is now yeah. So that would be one big thing, looking at the space like that. Um, the second thing is being out in nature. And there's so many facets to that. And it's why yeah. I created a forest therapy, forest bathing certification. And um, in Japan, they have been doing this concept of forest bathing for, for many years now. And it's a it's it's a, not an ancient ancient practice it it's based on the shinto shinto religion of being connected and honoring nature honoring the energy of the mountains and the trees as beings right yes and you know in japan people work really really hard and get really really stressed and they actually had a very very high like suicide rate and and disease rate because of all of the stress and so they were like, what health practice can we put in place? And they came up with this, get people back into the woods, get them connected with nature again. And they're studying scientifically, why does it work? Is it is it the natural aromatherapy from the trees? Is it being in the sunlight? Is it being around those colors? And it's all of those things. Yes. And so there's a lot of forest therapy practices out there. Um, but the reason why I created my own certification is that some of those practices kind of want to take people out for a full day or a weekend into the woods and to camp and be close to nature. And that's great. But the people who might need this healing from nature the most can't maybe do that. Absolutely. Maybe in, in time, they yeah. don't have the time to do that. Maybe physically, if they're in a wheelchair, if they are... Um, disabled in a way they can't go do that and so they shouldn't be denied those benefits of when you go into nature how you connect with it how you really connect with its energy um, it's also as you know as a soul coaching practitioner our connection with the energy of nature yeah. of air and water and fire and earth um, can help us and support us in profound ways yes and in these times, um, it can be so easy to get disheartened, right? Yes, yes. And, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't care. We should. But if we let ourselves be in a constant state of feeling sad and depressed and anxious and scared, yes. we're feeding into that energy in the world. Yeah. Yes, and and we aren't here to be sad. Right? No, we were we were born to enjoy joy and and <laughs> have a purpose in in life that is a, a more joyful part. We weren't born to be sad. No, and so as you know, soul coaching helps as coaches helps us help people um, rediscover what brings them joy. 
yeah. rediscover if you take away the the, uh, the blocks we put around ourselves mentally of what we can't do or what we're not good at or what we shouldn't try. And we take that away. Um, it brings so much joy. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, you can't, maybe you can't leave the house. Maybe you are a caregiver for somebody and that is what you need to do right now. It's not about just saying, oh, I'm leaving and I'm going to the mountains, right? It's, it's about how can you bring that joy? How can you recognize that you are doing your soul's mission, that you are living in accordance to your core values, which makes you really happy. Um, and so that's why I love soul coaching. Um, so another one of those tips is just to go back to what brings you joy. If it was something you did when you were a little kid, if you liked um, going outside and collecting flowers right then go outside and collect some flowers or if you liked coloring in a coloring book or you like playing with play-doh whatever it is go play go have some fun and play and bring that back into your life um and then another thing is how even if you can't go out how can you connect more with nature so um, I tend to bring my little nature friends in, right? I, I love not only essential oils, but I like rocks and crystals, right? Nice. Yeah. So I will have a collection of those rock and crystal friends, and they all have their own particular energies. I'll have those around, and it, and it reminds me, even if I'm not out in the meadow or out in the woods, I can be connected. Very important. And that is bringing nature into your home. And I love this because I say we're connected because, you know, because of working with Denise. And I have crystals and rocks and stones. Uh, and a friend taught me, you know, I, I was very sad that I couldn't do like lots of plants in my house. So she's taught me how to put plants in water. So I have a whole collection of little babies like that. And I think that's, that's like really, really important. To, it is. to connect like that with nature uh, and a thing that I learned from, from Denise. So tell me, Luann, somebody was asking me the other day in one of our uh, interviews that to give her a few little tips on feng shui. And I remember Denise talking about corners, how important it was to have energy movement in corners. Absolutely. Um, there are lots of things that will help bring the energy up in our homes. And that tends to be the, maybe the biggest feng shui mm -hmm. issue. It's not, people are always looking for where's the bad energy. It's not bad. It just no. tends to be stuck. Yes. And so if you can get that energy moving again, it makes you feel much more uplifted and vibrant. And so the reason why corners can be a challenge is if you just think of, um, if water was flowing, how if if there's a sharp bend, sometimes things leaves and things get stuck in that bend, right? It's the yeah. same thing in the corners of our house. Energy can be flowing, but it gets kind of stuck in those corners. So it can be helpful to put things in corners that help make that energy move. And lots of things make energy move. So I'm going to talk about those things. You can put them in corners, but you can put them anywhere in your house where it feels a little stuck or stagnant like hallways or bathrooms or any place where it just might not might not feel like the energy is ramped up um i love little christmas twinkle lights i think that's what you were talking about yeah. is, is um and they're not just for christmas right they are for any time of the year and they make such amazing ones now on little thin copper wire the tiniest little lights it just looks like the fairies are living there yes and so I love to wind those in my plants. So it looks like the plant is just glowing with little fairy energy. Yeah. So if you have like a potted plant or, or a plant that's in water. Um, and you can't electric, you can't, even with the ones in water, these ones on the little copper wire that run on batteries, you can't electrocute yourself. So that's good. Okay. Um, and because that's not the kind of energy we want. No. <laughs> but, Putting these, wrapping these little lights around things, or if you have a bookshelf in the corner, just laying these little lights along the shelving and placing some of your treasures, rocks, crystals, and, and placing them so that the light kind of highlights them or shines through them um, can be a really powerful way to, to uplift energy. Yeah. Plants themselves are life force. And yeah. so 
Bringing plants in is bringing a life force energy in, and it will uplift the energy of your space. Your pets, your dogs, your cats, your pet fish, your birds, all of them are life force energy, yes. and they will uplift the energy of your space. Other things, anything, and they uplift the energy because they're moving, right? They're always yes. moving, they're life force energy. And so anything that moves. So if you put in like a wind chime, Yes. And there's a, a current of air in the house that will allow that wind chime to move. That's going to uplift the energy. Um, and there's other wind chimes that are like battery operated that will just kind of keep turning themselves and tinkling themselves. So even if you don't have a breeze, you'll have that movement and you have that beautiful sound. And sound is another way to uplift the energy of the space. Okay. If we have been listening to the news or we've been listening to some of those reality TV programs where people are mean to each other, okay, yes. <laughs> the vibration of their words and that, that sound is in our space. It's real. Yes, yes. And so turn those things off and turn on uplifting music, music that has beautiful words or beautiful sound or no words at all, just music that makes your soul sing. And that will uplift and shift the energy of the space. Another, if, if we're thinking of all of our senses, then another thing would be essential oils. And essential yes. oils bring in the realm of the plant kingdom without us, if you say, ah, oh, all my plants die and it makes me sad, then use essential oils because you've got that vibration of the plant and it's healing and spiritual qualities. Um, and bringing that energy in and some of the best oils to uplift your energy if, if you've been feeling kind of low would be like lemon or wild orange or bergamot or um if you feel like you really if people have been really sad or stuck in the space maybe even working with some pine um uh, uh, pine's a really good one Okay. And pine comes in like white fur and all, all different variations of pine that it will kind of clear the denser energy out and then use something sparkling. Wow. And then if we're looking at another realm of energy, then let's look at candles. Okay? Yes. Because candles are about the energy of transformation, right? When we use fire energy and soul coaching, we're... We are now calling upon people to shift out of their old pattern yes. and step into their new pattern. Mm -hmm. And so if people use candles in their space and light it intentionally, it's like I'm releasing my sadness, I'm releasing my depression, I'm releasing my stuck feeling, and I'm welcoming and joy. Light the candle and then let that candle shift the energy of the space. I love it. Light the candle and welcome and joy. Mm -hmm. Gosh, wow, that's amazing. So simple, simple tips that can transform anyone's space. Now that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. And Luan, tell me, what does hope mean for you, the word hope? Hope for me um, has, a couple different, has a couple of different connotations. Right? Yes. Um, hope sometimes for me means... Um, when I'm feeling really maybe stuck or down that and it's not even possible to imagine how I'm going to get from one place to another like I can't even see the path I can't even know what I'm supposed to do next all I can do is hope right hope there's some way out of it hope that there's something better and so and it's different than believe. Like if you say, oh, I'm going to set my intention. I'm going to believe this can happen. Believe to me means that I've figured out a way, right? Yes. Whether my way is the right way or not. But hope is very much turning it over to the realm of my guides, right? Yes. It's like, this is the intention oh. that I want. And I hope, I hope you can help me make it happen. Yes, I love it. <laughs> turning it over to the realm of the guides. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. It's so beautiful. Wow. So lovely. And what was last year like for you? If you could tell our audience, what do you think kept you in balance last year? Um, it was a tough year. When I think about a year ago, right now, 
it was like it was like the world was falling apart right at first you're like oh this can't be happening this this isn't really what can be happening and you know i'm self-employed my husband's self-employed and so personally we were looking at all right how much money do we have in the bank how long can we pay our mortgage like it was really looking at how are we going to survive yes and so you know it was addressing that fear of like what what if we lost everything what you know it was it was scary and it was sad and um and at that time you know the virus really wasn't that prevalent here you know, so it wasn't a worry about our health. It was more a worry about our business and what we were going to do. And then I'll have to say that going through that, that made us think about a different way to live. Yes. Right. And, you know, I live out here on 88 acres in the woods. And so, you know, social distancing is kind of something we do all the time. Like we're just you know, we're just here. Um, in heaven. <laughs> it, so it didn't affect us that much in that way. Um, but what I recognized is with my my clients and my students who now had to be home, um, it shifted their lives. It made them closer to their kids. It made them closer to their other family members. It made them realize who they really missed. It made yeah. them realize what was really important in life. Yes. Um, so I saw those kinds of things happening for them. For Ted and I, it was very much a reinvention of putting more things online, which um, has turned out wonderful, right? At the time, it was scary. Yes. At the time, I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? But actually being online allows you to connect with a lot more people. And, yes. Um, it's been wonderful. So I have to say, I'm very grateful that I, while I've lost some friends to COVID, yeah. Um, my immediate family has been safe and we've gotten through this that um, in looking at all the trauma and tragedy that others have had my heart really goes out to them and I feel so blessed right I feel so blessed yes. that um, that me and my family we made it through yes and that um Whatever comes next, there's this sense that, you know, we can figure it out. No matter, no matter what comes next, we'll figure it out. We can be resilient and we can figure it out. So I guess if I was going to sum it up, I feel very, very, very grateful. And I feel maybe stronger for the experience, right? Just it's not always going to be perfect, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. Wow. It's not always going to be perfect, but we'll figure it out. Yes. And if you have a message to give our audience about what they can take forward into 2021 and the future, what would it be? It would be to think about what brings you personal joy. And if you have joy, you're sharing that joy out to others and they may need that joy. Um, So if that is simply being able to smile at somebody or wave at somebody or do a kind thing, or even whenever you see somebody who's really joyful, it, it brings your energy up. It's not being selfish to be joyful. It is, it is something that you are maybe here to share with others. Thank you so much, Luan. It was such a pleasure talking to you. <laughs>